Hey guys, Patriot coming to you from the tabletop. This is a video that I held up a little bit in order to post directly behind my previous video, which was the uh, Sawyer Squeeze water filtration uh, review. As you can see here, I've got uh, an array of filters that I have used over the years, filters and treatment uh, or purifiers that I've been using over the years. And uh, I thought I'd talk about each one and just let you know what I've been comparing the Sawyer Squeeze to, uh, why I like this. It's small, lightweight. I was actually using it down by, the, uh, by uh, one of the creeks this morning and it worked flawlessly and quickly. I filtered a whole gallon of water uh, using just a single bag and this filter and it went rather quickly. So when we're talking about filtering out critters, uh, there's three main ones that we're looking to stop and that's protozoans the largest, bacteria uh, that kind of fall in the middle, and viruses which are very small. As a general rule, uh, protozoans are filtered above one micron, bacteria above 0.1 microns, and viruses above 0.01 microns. Now none of these pump style filters here uh, will filter, or including the Sawyer Squeeze will actually filter out viruses. They're just too small. But we've got different ways that we can deal with viruses. We can boil them. We can chemically treat them with this uh, MSR Myox or with Aquamira or with Portable Aqua or Polar Pure, any of the... Um, actually, I don't think that's available anymore because of the iodine. In any case, uh, there's different ways that we can either chemically treat those or boil those uh, or boil in order to uh, kill back uh, viruses. <laughs> All right, when it comes to safe drinking water in the outdoors, we're typically going to be most worried about bacteria and protozoa. Um, all of these systems will deal with those very effectively and uh, all of these pump styles here work by actually removing them. Uh, it's notoriously difficult to kill uh, cysts like Cryptosporidium uh, with chemical treatments, although the MSR Myox seems to work very well. Sometimes you'll have to double up a dose or wait a long period of time for it to actually kill uh, that type of a critter. Over here on the far left, or the far right, uh, on your screen I guess, let me take the camera off, is the uh, Pure Scout. This is one that I've had for quite a while. This lower section here actually screws onto the main body making this whole outfit here a little bit larger. It's about 11 and a half inches long from the top of the T-handle to the base. You can see that both the input and output uh, connections are right next to each other there. It's got a T-handle and a detonator style switch. It does give you ample knuckle clearance so you're not going to bust a knuckle out there or pinch yourself. It's a robust filter. I've had it for a long time. I've, I've never, uh, you know, had a single problem with it, but it is kind of big. You know, I, I mentioned it's almost a foot long and uh, weighs in at about 1.15 pounds with the uh, hose, with the tubing and attachments. Uh, good reliable filter. This one actually has an iodine impregnated glass matrix style filter. Uh, I don't think that the iodine impregnated versions of the filter are available any longer. I do have a spare for this, but again, this is more of my, uh, you'll see this in my uh, disaster relief kit uh, that you'll see in my, my video lineup. So this is just kind of relegated to, to backup duty now and uh, where size and weight are not a big deal. Over here is uh, the Pure Hiker. This thing has just been a mainstay in the hiking and backpacking community and among hunters uh, for a long time now. It's, uh, it's, very, it's relatively small. You can see it kind of fits. Well, it's a little bit bigger than my hand, obviously, but it's a, it's a relatively compact filter, and it came not too far uh, on the heels of the Pure Scout and the Pure Explorer, which were much larger. So getting to this size was a, a real nice bonus. This is actually my brother's. I had to borrow it because my Pure Hiker uh, ended up uh, being given to one of my hunting buddies uh, somewhere along uh, somewhere uh, along the years. I, I can't remember who actually ended up with it, but... Uh, in any case, they needed one, and uh, it was uh, just one of those those gift situations. Anyhow, pretty small, compact, reliable, uses a glass matrix style filter. Let's go ahead and take this apart for you really quick. All right, this one's pretty simple. You slide the handle to the side like this. 
unscrew the cartridge. You can see the output uh, is on the top. The intake here is at the bottom. This unscrews or just uh, pulls out. This is one of the older filters. This is also an iodine impregnated filter, which are not, I don't believe they're available anymore. I think there's been some new restrictions on iodine. You can see it kind of stains the inside of the tube a little bit. Not a big deal. Uh, we've got extra filters for these. But uh, it's a very reliable system and uh, uh, very easy to maintain and operate as long as you, you know, uh, shake the water out of this, take the filter out, let the filter dry when you're done. Both of these are real good systems. They're fairly shockproof, more shockproof than the ceramic filter that I have over here in the MSR Mini Works, and slightly more compact uh, by design than the MSR Mini Works. You can see the difference there. The pump assembly here is uh, not quite as elegant, I guess I would say, as the Pure Hiker. Um, this has an absolute uh, filter size of 0.3 microns, uh, same as the Scout. The Scout pumps at uh, about a, gal or a liter and a quarter to a liter and a half per minute. And this is right about one liter per minute, maybe a little bit better if you're a good pumper. It takes about eight pounds of, eight pounds of force to actually uh, uh, pump this with water flowing through it. Pop the little cap off of there, just a little uh, cover cap. All right, going on to the next filter here. This is the MSR Mini Works. It's a nice filter. It's very robust. I've never had a problem breaking any of these filters, despite you know being made out of uh, plastics and polymers and everything. That they seem to be be very tough. You can see this one. You can see the piston inside the uh, the water compression cylinder there. It's uh, it's a nice design. It's actually nice to be able to see the water flowing through. You can see it's got a, a sediment filter down here with a weight to submerge it. Uh, let's go ahead and take this apart so that I can show you that uh, ceramic filter. So different, it's so difficult sometimes to hit all the talking points and uh, and make these videos you know not run so long. I'm, uh, I'm gonna be making an effort here to kind of compress these a little bit. But you can see the entire pump assembly comes off. You've got a big o-ring around here. Give that a hit ring comes off and here's the ceramic element and I can't see the screen so hopefully I'm in frame you can see it has another thick silicone style o-ring here at the bottom the other goes up at the top here it's a very uh, uh, robust I like the seals on this they're a little bit beefier than in the pure which is now made by Catadyne by the way I didn't mention that but uh, this filter hardly has any use on it it's virtually brand new now the way that you would, uh, this is actually a serviceable filter. So with the Pure uh, Hiker and the Pure Scout over here, once that filter becomes clogged or it slows down, you would simply discard the filter and install a new one. With this setup, uh, you're actually able to clean with a 3M pad or one of these Scotch-Brite pads, you can actually clean the, uh, the outside of the ceramic element. Now as you do that you're actually removing a thin layer of the ceramic itself and uh, they've built in a gauge at the bottom of the housing and you can actually take this gauge and as long as it doesn't slip over the outside of this filter element you know that it's still serviceable. Uh, when this slips over you know it's time to replace it. Now these are widely available, it's a very common filter and so it's pretty easy to find. The same goes for the Pure uh, Hiker, not so much the Pure Scout anymore. It is a very simple system, you can see there's nothing in the housing except uh, just, just an open tube. Uh, not, not complicated at all. The bottom does unscrew and uh, you can see there very very simple. You put a little uh, silicone on the bottom of this that'll seal it against the bottom and a little bit of silicone up at the top as well. Forgot my o-ring. I guess we'll put it on later. Alright, let's go on to the next filter. Alright, the next device really isn't a filter at all, contrary to what I just said. This is the MSR Myox. It's a mixed oxidant solution producing uh, pen style uh, treatment. Uh, you can see this is a um, uh, the military version and uh, I'm going to have to put the camera on a tripod to kind of show you how this works.
All right, let's show you how this works. Uh, this is a battery powered unit. And at the bottom of the unit here is uh, where the two CR123 batteries are housed. See one, two. There's a little contact plate here on the bottom connected by a little flexible connection. So you wanna be mindful of that. You don't wanna bend it or snap it off. Uh, I've never heard any problems of that, but uh, obviously you wouldn't want to pinch it, pinch it into the threads or something. But you can see those two batteries go in there. These will power uh, this pen for a long time, uh, producing uh, hundreds of gallons. But uh, it's a lightweight, portable solution with a 12 to 15 year shelf life with those CR123, so very reliable. These were actually being, uh, this system was actually being shipped over to the Golf in Gosh, it was 2002 or 2003. Uh, these were being shipped over in the tens of thousands, this exact style in this, uh, the military uh, sand colored or uh, tan colored uh, outfit. At the very top of the chamber, you can see everything's connected, so you're not gonna lose any, any parts or pieces. At the very top, there's a salt chamber. And uh, what the salt chamber is gonna do, uh, you would moisten this and put water in there to moisten the granules and you put this back on then you can see here on the lower section that there's actually a little trough all the way around here surrounding an electrode this little electrode mixes with the salt water or brine solution and creates electrolysis and uh, what you would do um, you see a lot of people after they put you would fill this little trough with water then close the top back up and then you would shake this and the water passes through a little micro screen right here and so it can go into the salt chamber and then drip or uh, uh, pour back down into the uh, electrode trough right here and uh, you see a lot of people <laughs> shaking the thing like this well, what you're trying to do is just pass water from the salt to the electrode trough. And rather than shake it, I found just tipping it like this back and forth a few times, the, the water will gravity run to the top and then gravity run back down into the trough. After that, you would take off the, uh, the cap again. You would activate this or push this. The little run light comes on and it starts to foam or fizzle this water. So uh, I didn't really want to get into a whole instructional thing here but basically this creates a, a, a chlorine type solution and then that little trough of water is poured into your container uh, so you're uh, you're chemically uh, you're, you're making a chemical solution in order to treat your water it's a nice compact system it does rely on batteries but the batteries or the power sources themselves are highly reliable so not a big issue there as long as you have salt which I've got some rock salt here uh, you can continue to uh, to power this if you have salt and batteries and water uh, you will have to wait a certain amount of time especially if you're worried about cryptosporidium and these days you just don't know so you're going to have to it will actually uh, kill the uh, the critters uh, fairly or, or inactivate the critters uh, fairly quickly but in order to kill them completely uh, you might have to wait up to about four hours uh, as is the case with any chemical treatment whether it's aquamira or potable water um, now this system also comes with some little test strips and basically uh, you can see well I'll take one out it's like a little litmus strip and uh, once you treat the water and pour it into a container you would take the little litmus strip dunk it in there and then you would match up the color here uh, purple uh, dark purple being okay uh, medium purple being okay uh, a light purple not enough solution so you might have to mix up another dose and put it in there uh, now the number the amount of water that you want to treat it will uh, be affected by how many times or I should say the number of times that you push this button will depend on how much water you want to treat in a container. Uh, but to give you an idea, they give you a little scale right here and uh, uh, one press of the button gives you a half liter, two presses gives you one liter, three presses two liters, and four presses will be a gallon of water approximately. Um, so uh, you don't have to keep reloading the electrode trough. You can just put the water in there one time 
press this four times, let it cycle, and you can treat an entire gallon of water, uh, which is nice. This is good for large volume applications. It's also uh, would be nice as a backup or to work in conjunction with any of the other filters that we've talked about over here. Again, these will filter out uh, bacteria and protozoa. They will not filter uh, back to, uh, viruses, so you could still have live viruses in your water. This will kill the live viruses as well as uh, cryptosporidium and uh, protozoans, or I'm sorry, bacteria and protozoans. I guess it's probably the most complicated or in-depth uh, system that we'll talk about today, but uh, uh, no flow rate on this obviously. This is about a one liter flow rate. Uh, this is probably just a little bit quicker if you're uh, if you pump it fast. The uh, Sawyer squeeze over here, I can uh, filter. I can uh, filter out about two liters of water in one minute with this. So it's it's actually much quicker than these other pump styles here, uh, which which I think is really nice. It'll actually gravity feed at about. Oh, two thirds of a liter a minute. So it's a pretty amazing filter and extremely lightweight. You can see it's a lot larger in diameter than the uh, uh, Myox pen. But again, this doesn't filter anything. This just uh, deactivates or kills what's in your water. You're still drinking it. So a nice one two punch would be to use this plus this. Now, as a outdooring system or my wilderness backpack. I don't know if I'm additionally going to carry this. I think I'd prefer to carry uh, chemical tabs as they're a lot uh, lighter weight. They don't rely on batteries or anything like that. And I can carry, you know, 30, 36 of these things uh, and they don't require batteries or anything. So uh, a, a nice, uh, a nice backup way. But if I was only going to um, if I was filtering for a large group and I was worried about uh, ba uh, viruses, like in a urban setting, you know, maybe uh, disaster preparedness uh, where you could have viruses, that type of thing, or where they're more common, this would make a good one-two punch. Any of these filters plus this. After a while, you run out of these tabs, but on one set of batteries, you can filter, I believe it's over uh, 200 gallons with this system. Uh, so. As long as you have salt, uh, you can, uh, and you know, of course, salt's very easily available. So uh, I've come to really like this uh, as a backup system. I've recently employed this in my uh, urban EDC bag because it is a very reliable system, and the batteries that I'm using will also work for my uh, uh, my tactical lights. I like to filter my outdoor water. There's nothing wrong with using a Steri pen or this and drinking uh, the uh, the dead stuff in the water. It's, as long as it's dead, it's not going to hurt you. But there's something that's really nice about being able to uh, filter your water and remove the junk and the sediment and the gunk in the water. It sure is nice to drink relatively uh, clean looking water instead of green water or brown water. Uh, it's just um, uh, additionally, it seems to remove some of the, uh, the, the smells and the tastes in the water uh, to a certain extent. Um, this one here actually has a carbon attachment, which I forgot to mention. And as you saw, I've attached a, a little carbon platypus section to this as well, which makes drinking out of a water hole or some really nasty source a lot better. So uh, in any case, there's uh, just my humble opinion, guys, uh, based on a little bit of experience with, uh, with different systems over the years. So uh, hopefully this was helpful and uh, try to keep it a little bit shorter for you this time. So uh, thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate uh, the comments and views. And uh, thanks for uh, sticking with me all these years. It's been a fun trip. Patriot out.